If this was a cyber attack, we would see a mass supply chain attack happening right now. They have kernel access to all the systems, all your infrastructure globally. So much of what we rely on brought to a halt in what is the biggest IT outage in history. You're looking at some live scenes from the airport. It is chaos again, 6 a.m. on the East Coast. CrowdStrike is a very large and well-known uh, provider in the security space. It's a market-leading security provider that's utilized by many leading banks and, and large, you know, blue chip and government organizations. So certainly the impact is going to be quite significant. It's not as simple as a quick update um, being rolled out. As soon as that update rolled, it happened instantly. From my personal experience, I saw it live happen to me. I instantly pulled ethernet cable thinking this was a cyber attack. It also happened to a screen behind me. So I pulled the network, shut it off, and then we were later to find out that various businesses were all affected at once. So CrowdStrike is one of the largest um, security platforms slash EDRs used. Uh, they support very, very large companies, so they go, governments, um, your transport, your banks, all the way down to individual users. So in this case, the EDR um, sensor, it runs on the kernel level, meaning it operates directly with the operating system, meaning anything it does, um, it has the highest privilege or it can directly affect the system. But most importantly, um, there was a memory pointer which pointed to an unallocated address. So what happened was when this happens and it runs on the kernel level, it will cause a corruption and then this leads to the blue screen of death. I, IT support, they cannot um, interact with a machine when it's in this state because it's not connected to a network. So there's no remote support as well as there's very limited information presented to the end user when they got this screen. So all of a sudden we had this communication barrier, this chain effect where multiple businesses are starting to be affected. You tried to go home on transport, the trains were down, all the screens were down. Anyone who are at the airport, the screens were down. Uh, for example, Jetstar is commonly mentioned. And uh, where we had those dependencies of businesses working together, that was broken and all of a sudden business could not function. The reason why Australia was so affected was because one, the Western countries, we utilize CrowdStrike a lot, but two, this happened during a peak time of business on a Friday. So when businesses were trying to get their information or things done, at the end of the week, it was all affected. All computers switched off around 2 to 3 p.m. Um, if you saw the videos in the airport, all the screens are blue. The employees didn't know what was happening either. So this mass chaos and confusion. Um, if you saw the flight map radars, there's a, a common video going around the U.S. where they had many, many planes in the sky. All of a sudden this happened, planes had to land. And there was only like two or three planes left for many hours until things started to slowly come back. To start off, what is a test ball? Well, a test ball essentially is a, um, a stages slash environment which uh, a company would test their software. So um, if it's, for example, in user acceptance testing or integration based testing, where they're really, um, you know, testing all scenarios of this software, um, ensuring that if it's on a Windows or a Linux or a Mac device, it will run smoothly. This was an update that is done regularly and it was kind of just pushed. Um, there is that concern that maybe this should have been tested more thoroughly. And this is what we're kind of seeing. So in this case, this was a little bit different from um, your usual types of updates. So as mentioned before, um, this was a signature update. This is pushed regularly um, throughout the day to ensure that uh, signatures and their sensor is up to date. It has the latest attack to protect companies in real time. This is different from your standard update, which would be a features push, which would have that regular testing and would be a lot slower. The problem is it is trying to stay up to date live with the latest attack, the newest technique. And if they are to hold back and say, spend that extra week or a day, their clients are potentially at risk. And as previously mentioned, they have very sensitive clients, for example, government, transport, primary infrastructure that cannot afford to go down, um, ironically. Before any code is pushed to production, it is recommended to do thorough testing get to test against various different devices. So that's just the standard rule. We have seen this happen before, keep in mind. Uh, McAfee went down, Kaspersky, um, Microsoft uh, Windows antivirus has gone down the past. So this is not something new that's happened, this blue screen of death. However, we learn from these situations and learn that testing is key. You can't skip testing. This sort of incident that happened, um, as we've discussed, is very hard to remediate. You have to individually and manually go on each device to fix it. So what we're still seeing is businesses still struggling to get up um, to their normal pace. So Delta Airlines, for example, are still trying to recover. Their airlines are, um, sorry, their flights are delayed. They're still having issues. 
and it's probably going to take them a while until they can fully recover. You didn't need to have CrowdStrike installed to be directly affected. Since the whole world was affected, we have all these large businesses that all use this platform. When that platform gets um, taken down, all their systems get taken down also. All of a sudden, they can't offer their services. They can't offer their businesses. Um, when we talk about direct impact to the standard person, the easiest example is the shops, retail stores. Their uh, point of service uh, systems all of a sudden could not work. They, they had to result to hard cash money. They can't do their banking. They can't put through um, you know, um, transactions. This then led to shops or like say like your mechanic, they can't do their job all of a sudden in a sense of uh, putting through or let's say purchases for an order, contact their warehouses for further information, that was taken down. You then have your banks, you had an issue with their applications, you couldn't access their apps, you couldn't access websites, you, uh, some FPOS machines were taken down. So it affected, yeah, a large array of businesses, like, like at a ripple effect, as previously mentioned, because for example, an insurance company was affected. Therefore, a client calling up asking for their service, they couldn't get it. They're affected and then their people are affected. And that's kind of what happened in this case. We're seeing online really mixed opinions here. A lot of people are saying this is a cyber attack. You know, they're covering something up, but we would see a very different case here. We're talking about software that's potentially on many, many systems. As we said, over 8.5 million. If this was a cyber attack, we would see a mass supply chain attack happening right now. They have kernel access to all the systems, all your infrastructure globally. This would be very significant. They would be stealing data right now. We would see it going out through our network. Our systems would be taken it down. We wouldn't be having transport open or for example, if services were still running like that, we would be detecting much different activity. There would be malware, there would be suspicious activity on all these devices. If this was a cyber attack, this would be a complete different scenario from what we're talking about today. And th this would be the largest cyber attack. The incident, the impact is only the short term currently that we're seeing, but there's a massive long-term effect that we're, that we're about to see. So SMS, um, email, um, calling, all these sorts of platforms will be abused now. So you are gonna be receiving those calls. Amazingly, the, commu uh, the community are coming together and there's they have a large list of all these new malicious domains now, all targeted at CrowdStrike. So they're targeting a attack technique called typo squatting, meaning <clears throat> if you type in CrowdStrike or CloudStrike, uh, you are going to go onto a malicious website that now saying, oh, here's a hot patch remediation, click it, download it, Malware is now executed and there's a rat on your system, meaning a remote access um, Trojan. So if you currently go onto CrowdStrike's website, they've um, posted about these scans to be aware of. They post about one commonly going around, which is affecting um, the Latin American audience, um, which is the hot patch. There's also the domain list, which is going around, as well as there's currently a Windows um, remediation tool document going around where it's a Microsoft Word document and it's taking advantage of something called a macro exploit, meaning once you download, uh, for example, if your computer's out of date, Microsoft Word's out of date, um, you, you aren't patched, or if this is a very sophisticated macro, as soon as you launch it, um, it will auto execute, or it will ask at the top, it will be in a yellow, uh, yellow banner saying, would you like to enable macros? As soon as you click this, a script's gonna run automatically, and that's gonna do that data exfiltration, steal your credentials. So this is quite a complex problem that we're going to answer. There's no straight answer. That's the truth here. But what there is um, on CrowdStrike, there's an official, uh, we can provide the URL, which there's an official web page, which has all the remediation. So you've got to answer, is your device um, Azure? So is it on the cloud? Is it just a Windows standalone device? Does it have BitLocker? So if depending on uh, which answer this is, we'll uh, vary between your solution, but go to his main sources, the Microsoft and CrowdStrike, and they will have the solution for you and a nice documentation, as well as CrowdStrike has um, released a video detailing how to also remediate this for any home users who, for example, are by themselves, not connected to a business and they want to fix this. I think everyone's mentioning this, the McAfee 2010, because the current CEO, he was CTO at McAfee when they had a huge outage. And now he started CrowdStrike and heck, it happened again.